Well, this session is Write Once, Pwn Everywhere. Your speaker is Yang Yu. And thank you, and I hope you enjoy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is my first presentation in Black Hat. To be honest, I'm uh, a little nervous. Uh, so I hope Smile can make up for my terrible English and uh, really ugly slides. Thank you. My presentation will be in four parts. The first two parts are about bypass D, uh, ASLR, and the other two parts are about bypass DEP. Yeah, uh, my name is Yang. I work for Tencent, a Chinese company. Tencent is the company name, not the money they paid me. <laughs> Nobody works for Tencent, that's too little. Huh? I joined the, the security industry from uh, 2002. Most of my research is about exploiting and detection. But before 2002, uh, yeah, I was working hard for my MD degree, and I finally got it. I almost uh, uh, became a doctor. But now you see, uh, yeah, I'm a computer monkey. Like you guys, uh -huh. see the difference? See the difference? No girls anymore. <laughs> That's our job, yeah. Okay, let's get down to business. Mm. Once upon a time, JScript used BSTR to store string object data. The BSTR structure had, had two parts. You see the point? The two parts. The length and the date. When we create a string in the JavaScript, it will generate a BSTR in memory, like this. The length, the date. Because of the length, the string object cannot access the data out of bounds. But if we use some vulnerability to increase the length, then we can access any data after the BSTR. Like this. The length, yeah. Then we use some uh, uh, vulnerability to overwrite the length with a really large value. Yeah. And now we can do out of bounds reading. That means info leak and the bypass ASR. And the address of the length, we can calculate it out. Yeah. This length, this length, we can calculate this length. First, change any character in the spread string by some vulnerability. And then check each character find out which one was changed, and calculate the offset to the initial of the string. Then we get the address. First, uh, spray the, the 
traditional hip spray. This is our spray address. And we write, write to this address. We spray the, uh, with zero and we change, change some character. It, and we find the character not zero. Yeah. Finally, we can calculate the address. Uh, but from IE9, from IE9, JavaScript 5 was abandoned. JavaScript 9 replaced it. And JavaScript 9 did not use BSTR now. Fortunately, JavaScript 5 is still in the system for the compatibility, like many old things. So we can summon it back, like some um, old ghost. So we need a, a magic spell. Yeah. This is our magic spell. JavaScript 9 did not support script encoding. So if you set encode tag, JavaScript 5 will be re-recruited. The comeback, the comeback tag is also work, but some features are not supported, like EVAL function. Yeah. That's our spell. Okay, so uh, it seems that we got everything. Now we can have BSTR again. We can do info leak, then ROP. And the J JavaScript file is universal. This trick can work from IE6 to IE11, maybe 12. Yeah, but is JavaScript 9 really unexploitable? No. Now let's talk about the JavaScript 9. Yeah. <clears throat> JavaScript 9 and uh, JavaScript 5 are maybe nearly identical for web developers but they are very different internally. Even the file size of the JavaScript 9 is much bigger, much bigger. Yeah. And I always say we should thank Google V8 and uh, those speed tests. Yeah. Because of them, although JavaScript 9 is uh, no longer use BSTR, but there is something new and better. JavaScript 9 is designed to fast. Yeah. So the security is not the highest priority. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's see about this. Um, this is how JavaScript 9 stores string object data. The length and the, the date are in different memory address. The length, the length. And uh, the date, yeah, this is the, uh, the length, the, the date address and the, the date, you see. They are in different address. And although BSTR is gone, spring string data is meaningless. But we can spring string object, not a string, not a string date, but a string object. Yeah. We, we don't spring some big strings. 
we spray many small strings. See, so just two character. Yeah. We spray a very short string many times, then we get the string object on the address we wanted. Yeah. So do the length. Using this technique, we even do not need to locate the length address. We can control it. See, this length is in the spread address. Yeah. The spread address. Yeah. Right? So I say it's much better. But if you really like the locating game, we also have something like BSTR. In JavaScript 9, the array data is our new BSTR. See, we create many big arrays. We create many big arrays. This is one of the array objects we create. And uh, this is the array date. And we can see there is three lengths. There is three lengths. One. One. Two, three. Yeah, there is three lengths. One is in the object, two are in the date. See that uh, the red number below? That is the length we will rewrite. This one. Locating array data length is very similar to locating BSTR length. Just write a spread address, then check each number value, find out which one was changed, and calculate the offset to the initial of the array, and then we got it. But the real challenge is here. There is a little difference between BSTR and the array date. If only in larger length in the array data prefix, the auto bounds read will be filled. Yeah. Because JavaScript 9 will check that uh, three lengths. Yeah. We just say there are three lengths. JavaScript 9 will check that three lengths while reading array data. You can't just overwrite one of them. If we just uh, overwrite uh, this and uh, do out of bounds reading, it will be filled. But, but, yeah. Although we can't do out of bound reading, but the out of bound writing can be done. We can't read, but we can write. It's funny. I, I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you do out of bound writing, the other two lengths will be rewrote automatically. I, I don't know why, why they, they, <laughs> they design the, like this, uh, but it just, uh, okay. See, we, we do out-of-bound writing, yeah? And uh, these two lengths, 
got to be changed automatically. Yeah. Then we can do out of bounds reading. Yeah. I think uh, JavaScript 9 is more exploit friendly. Yeah. We don't need to locate in string length. We can control it. And uh, with array, we can write any memory, not only read. BSTR is read only. Huh? Now we can read and write. And uh, JavaScript 9 have many other exploit-friendly features. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to talk all of them. Maybe in other conference. <laughs> I, I just show you some uh, interesting objects. Yeah. Yeah. In JavaScript 9 from IE 10, there are some new objects. This object make, make it more easier to read and write memory. Since I don't have enough time to talk all about this, so I uh, left some questions for you. How to turn calling UAF to rewriting UAF? Um, how, to, how to trigger a rewrite, rewriting UAF mobile times without a crash? Since BSTR use system heap, how to bypass this, uh, the heap gaps in Windows 8? We know uh, the Windows 8 have a new feature. Uh, they, they make gaps in the system heap. Yeah. But on, only, only you, uh, only JavaScript 5 uh, fa face this. The JavaScript 9 I just, uh, like I say, is more exploit friendly. They use uh, custom heap. No, no gaps. No gaps, yeah. And uh, string object is read only. How to write a memory in JavaScript 5? Yeah. yeah. And rewriting UAF is not rare, but not every rewriting is exploit friendly. The first is a lovely one, write any value to any address, but the others are not so lovely, not fully controlled. How to exploit all of them? That's also the question left for you. So um, now we can choose JavaScript 5 or JavaScript 9 to do info leak and the ROP. Yeah. ROP is a great technique, but creating an ROP chain is a laborious process. I'm not a very... I'm not a hardworking man. Yeah. They say laziness is the mother of invention. So uh, let's do some invention. Yeah. Vital point strike. This is uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda. Uh -huh. Vital point strike. Vital, vital point points is uh, vital points are some special points in the human body. A pressure to vital points can make intense pain, even lead to death. Uh, like uh, Achilles heel. Yeah, many people know about vital points. Uh, Chinese people. Japanese people, even Vulcan people. See, Spock really good at this. Vulcan 
nerve pinch. Uh, who likes Spock? Uh, I'm a Spock fan. That is human body, but is there any vital point in computer memory? Let's think about this. What's the difference between these two programs? The Windows script host and the Internet Explorer. In Windows script host or HTML application, JavaScript can invoke any object, such as W script shell, yeah, or FSO. It can do almost anything, but IE can't. What's the difference between two programs, these two programs? Yeah, think about that. There is a safe mode switch. There is a safe mode switch. This is the persuade code. That's our vital point. In some special address, as long as even one byte be overwritten, your browser will enter guard mode. Guard mode. Then you can do anything, run program, read, write, uh, local file. Yeah, you can do anything. Just one byte. Since we can uh, read and uh, write any memories, just like uh, I say in in the pre, uh, yeah, just like I say, use the JavaScript nine module. Yeah, we can read and write any memories, so we can find this vital point and overwrite it. So we got a guard mode, i.e., yeah. But if you really want to do that, there are more puzzles. Uh, how to locate the JavaScript object? How to read JavaScript object? when its address is lower than the corrupt BSTR. And on uh, JavaScript 9 in IE 11, safe mode is well protected. How to bypass that protect? Yeah, these, these are all the puzzles. And even if you solve all the problems and finally run a program, you still have to deal with this. There will, there will be an alert window. We don't like alert window. I only have 15 minutes, so I can't present all this technique. Uh, but I really want to talk about the last puzzle. Yeah, this, this one. Uh, that alert window is my favorite. Yeah. It's really tricky. Let's see how to resolve the puzzle. First, we download a, a library, a library, our Trojan library, yeah? 
we use the some some uh, the, the the XML object or the image tag or any any other method. The file will be saved in the catch the, the the catch directory. Since we are already in guard mode, we can invoke any object. So we use FSO to search the catch directory to find that to find that library. Yeah. That's the second step. And then we use FSO to create a directory named system32. That's our fake system32. And copy the library to that directory. And named, it, named the library as Shell, shell 32. Yeah. Now we modified modify the system root, system root environment uh, var variable to the upper, to the upper directory of the fake system 32 we just uh, created. The last step is creating shell application object yeah. to trigger, trigger to loading our fake shell 32 library. That's how, how we load the library with script. Am I clear? Yeah. Simply, uh, we, we force the uh, IE to think about uh, the system root, the system root uh, directory is uh, our fake directory. So when the IE want to load some uh, library, they just uh, uh, f find from, from our fake directory. And the load library is, is smoothly, no, no alert window. Yeah. What vital point strike is very universal. It works from old times to modern times. Uh, I think it may be work on Windows uh, 9, 8, and IE 5, yeah. And uh, it even don't need any native shell code. Just a script, just a script. This is cool. But there is something more fantastic. interdimensional execution. Sorry, I really enjoy naming things. Yeah. Since we already can uh, read any memory, so we can create some really cool JavaScript functions like this, yeah, like this. Even on the ASLR, module address is aligned, so we can find the base address of the module from any pointer, like this. You see that? 5A4D, I don't know what's 5A4D. That, that, that's the uh, data in the P head, in the P head. And we use another value in P head to make it a double accurate.
with this function, uh, we can make any pointer in memory to become a module base base address. Yeah. When we got a module's base address, but this module is not what we want, we can use that function to find out any module in the import table, like a kernel 32. Yeah, we this this function will read 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 a module's import table and find out we we needed another another module. It's quite simple. You just uh, put uh, put the first module base address here, and put the module name you wanted here. Yeah. And get a prog address. Yeah, we can create a JavaScript version get a prog address. To get any API from any module, all those can be done by just JavaScript. Yeah. We, can, we can read the PE data, certainly we can do this. Now, by working through import tables and uh, JavaScript version get proc address, we can get almost any API from any module. Then we can do this in JavaScript, like in C. This, this code seems really like C but it's JavaScript. Yeah. Uh, th this is some pointer. It's uh, an object uh, address. We just uh, uh, pick it and uh, we, we got the JavaScript 9, uh, we got this, uh, the, we got the JavaScript 9 module base address from JavaScript object to pointer address. Yeah. And uh, almost any module import kernel 3.2, so we certainly can get module from Import. We use the get module for, uh, get module from import function to get a kernel three two base address from JavaScript nine, and we also get a ntdll from kernel three two. Yeah, and uh, the virtual protect the win exec. These two, these two API are, are fam, uh, for familiar and reasonable, huh? but why NT continue? Why NT continue? Okay. NT continue is a powerful native API for uh, exploit writer. Yeah. Uh, it can fully control all the registers, including ESP and EIP. Another good news is the value of the second parameter does not important. You can, you can just set any value or, or you just ignore it. 
we just need to set the first parameter. Yeah, we just uh, need to set this. This is not important. Yeah. The first parameter is a structure include uh, every register and a flags. We can find this in MSDN. This is the flag, the flag. And uh, these are the registers. Okay, let's put these together and see what could we do. When we do any object uh, uh, operation in JavaScript, it will trigger at least one native call. And the object itself will be pushed to the stake as the first parameter. The first number of almost all objects are a function pointer table, like this array object. Uh, this is, this is uh, our array object. This is a function table. Yeah, this is a function table. When we do some operation, we do some operation to the array, that will trigger a function pointer call yeah. And we can see this address is the object. Yeah. Is in the ESP. Yeah. This is the first parameter. So, uh, we can call any function. We can call any function by rewriting the function pointer table. Yeah. Since we can, we can write any address, yeah, of course we can change this. We can change this. So we can call any function by rewriting the function pointer table. And uh, most of the data in the first parameter almost can be controlled. Yeah. I mean this, this, the first parameter. The first parameter is the object. Every byte we can rewrite it. And we put anti-continue anti in a fake object function pointer table. This, this, yeah. And uh, overwrite the object date to thread the context structure. Then we can call any function with any parameters by controlling the EIP and the ESP. Because we use the object it itself as a parameter of anti-continue. So the first member in thread context, that is a context flags. See this EAX? X here, it is a 
function table, and it's also our flags. Yeah, that's one stone, two birds. Let's make it more clear. This is the fake thread context. Yeah. Our fake context uh, here is the ESP. In this case, we set EIP to the virtual, virtual protect and set ESP to a faked stake. In this faked stake frame, the return address is a pointer to our shell code. So when nt-continue is executed, virtual protect will reset the shell code memory uh, attu attu uh, attribute, attribute and return to execute. And since we already know the shellcode address, and we have JavaScript version get proc address, and those functions, so the native shellcode do not need get PCE or read PEB. We can do this in JavaScript. So this kind of shellcode may be difficult to detect and identify. Yeah. Let's see. This is the meaning of interdimensional. Native dimension and the script dimension, they can communicate with each other and work together. We use script to get our uh, API uh, address and uh, set them to, to, to native shell code. Yeah. And most of the native shell code can return, can, can write by C, like this. Put all the pointer in a table and use JavaScript to get those pointer. Whatever, how big is the shell code? Just need one assembly code to set the EBP to the pointer table created by JavaScript. This is the finally native shell code. Really tiny. Yeah. See this? This is our only assembly code. Yeah, this is the, the shell code. Now put the native code and the JavaScript code together. We got this interdimensional code. The, the, the script will get all pointer we needed and give it to the native shell code and then use nt-continue to execute it. Interdimensional execution is a little bit like ROP, but uh, totally not. We don't need any fixed things. So it is incredible universal. And uh, it not only can be used in IE, and not only can be used in Windows. That's what I mean. Right once upon anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I, 
I, I have a uh, right uh, exploit uh, in Windows 7 and uh, without any modify, it will uh, it work it work good on Windows 8. Yeah, that that's the right once pound anywhere. I think it is like TARDIS, travel in different dimension, do really cool things. Vital point strike and interdimensional execution are different from traditional exploit technique. Make sure your APT de detection system can handle them. And I uh, always like to use this slide to end my presentation. 2,000 years ago, Confucius said, while you do not know life, how can you know about death? And similarly, while you do not know attack, how can you know about defense? Agent Smith said, okay, uh, that is all. Any question? Okay. primitives are necessary in order to be able to do the interdimensional uh, execution? What uh, vulnerability, kind of, kind of primitives? So arbitrary read and arbitrary write, is there anything else that's necessary? Uh, just I, uh, as I say, we need a rewriting UAF or other vulnerability which can rewrite some address. Um, hi, good talk, thank you. So I have a question. So um, um, do you have any ideas of defending against vital point strike and interdimensional execution? Thank you. Of course. Uh, yeah. Let's see about uh, this. Actually, there's some, there some key in the interdimensional execution. Like uh, anti-continue, like anti-continue. Did you, did you find the, uh, we, 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 the anti-continue par parameters we, we, we send to anti-continue is really stringent. That's that's un, 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 unusual. We we can check this key point. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And the vital point strike. See, we need to use some uh, object which should not be in IE. Yeah, we can detect this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you guys.